Hi, I'm John Migloff, and I'm continuing in my series, Making Money with Data. In the very first video, I talked about the difference between hard data and soft data, and that going from small data to big data, there's a lot of soft data. Well, last week we talked about RFM, which is based on customer behavior. We mail something out, we get something back. Today we're going to talk about some of the ways that we can expand upon that by the use of geodemographic data. So if you remember our RFM, we've got our little canister of customer types and about half of them are one-time buyers. One X, one small amount of money and haven't bought in a long time. So one R, okay? And that can be almost half your file, depending on how long you've been in business. So anybody, John Worth said, any technique will find the lumps in the soup. One of the ways I know that someone isn't all that savvy with modeling is when they talk about how we, we know all the techniques, we use all the technique. Well, it isn't about technique. If there's lumps in the soup, anybody can find them. Okay, that's what John Worth says. And especially one can find these guys. Because these guys up here, if you quit mailing them, they'll call you. Where's my catalog? What's the deal? Why didn't I get the sale flyer? My neighbor got it. Why don't I get it? You know, I'm the frequent flyer mile guy. You know, you owe me. Anyway, so these, so these great customers are easy to spot. Anybody, any technique, no technique, just recency will find them because they keep coming back to the top. Okay. The tricky part is these guys down here. Okay, and so how do we, well they only ordered one time. They didn't spend a lot and they haven't ordered lately. How do we tell the difference between a great one of these that's gonna go on and a not so great one? Well, we talked a little bit about the idea of looking at product categories. We talked about um, a baseball company where if they bought um, pitching machines, we could identify them as business to business. Well, actually, what we did was we created a whole dimension that looked for things that went with owning a baseball diamond. It turned out that rosin bags, and that's pitchers use those to get their hands just right. They're, you know, you get a whole sack of them for about $10. And the other thing that worked was line chalk. Now, of course, if they bought bases, if they bought, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you, if it's a kid in his backyard, he's probably not gonna use line chalk. Okay, so even a $10 item can indicate that this is a, you know, a serious league or college or major league team. And so we utilize those product categories to go from just basic RFM to say, oh, this could be a business in here. See that? That could be a business in there. Those guys are worth mailing even if they haven't bought in a while. In fact, probably calling, maybe even stopping for a visit. Okay, so that's one of the ways you extend it. But, it, but now we still got the bulk of this being consumers, they bought once, they haven't bought in a long time, they didn't spend much money. How do we make any sense of those guys? Well, one of the ways we do it is with geodemographic data. Now geodemographic data, you know, there's a lot of, if I, if I built a spectrum, let's take this away. If I built a spectrum from over here, which is hard, to way down here, which is soft. Okay, down here in the soft would be things like, how long did they stay on our website? Now, half the time, the reason I'm on a website for a long time is because I can't find what I want, <laughs> you know. And I've noticed that some people put ads on their website for something I looked at at Amazon two weeks ago and I've already bought, but they don't know that. So, you know, they're, they're connecting to past, you know, that's very soft data, okay? It may or may not have anything to do with what I really want or, or what I already bought. So down here is, you know, there's just, there's oodles of that stuff. How, it's hard enough to connect this up, but, but as we get out of the RFM and we get into product, so this would be, so this would be purchase, just purchase, global purchase, and then it would be product. We're moving down into product as I just illustrated. And then we're gonna have profile, profile. And that, there's, there's a couple of levels of profile data. One could be um, uh, things like, what kind of car do you drive? 
you know, and we used to be able to buy that stuff. We used to be able to buy vehicle registration. We also could buy uh, license, driver's license information. So as I mentioned in an earlier video, I met with a gentleman who helped Sara Lee direct that sold pantyhose, uh, legs brand pantyhose, helped them do better than RFM by incorporating height and weight calculations on uh, driver's license information. So sometimes this can be very powerful. And that would go to an individual level consumer. The other thing you can do is you can buy appended profile data. So I might be able to find out your credit score or your, or probably not exactly the score, but maybe your credit, whether you're credit worthy or not, I may be able to find your age. There, you know, there's other things that you can, that you can uh, pay for from um, large databases. Now the problem I've had with some of that is I looked at myself on one of these databases and they had my mortgage and my age and my income very, very tight. But then I looked up my, my father who was down the road not too far and the numbers were exactly the same. <laughs> and needless to say, they weren't as right for him, especially since he'd passed away. Um, so the foundation of a lot of that profile data that you buy is actually the census data. And so, so this would be individual. This is, let's make that a, a happy face. And then there's profile data down here that's based on the neighborhood you live in. Okay, and we'll put a door on there and we'll put a house, a chimney and smoke around. Okay, so the neighborhood data is not as connected to you individually. And so we're gonna talk about the ways that you can you can maximize this and why this can help you perhaps even more than this. I talked to the cataloger just the other day uh, and he was asking me if we incorporate profile data and I said yes we do, geodemographic data, yes. And he said I've never made that stuff work and I said what are you talking about? He said well I have to pay a lot of money for that and I said well this isn't the kind you have to pay a lot of money for. <laughs> this is kind that we generate from census level data and it's universal and there's some big advantages to it. So bottom line is we're gonna look at how do we how do we deal with this down in here? Any modeling technique can get these guys. I mean these guys are not hard to find. Okay, they order a lot and if you ignored them they would come back anyway because they love you. So but what do you do down here? And and the the key to making money with data is you know that if you mailed all the way down to the bottom of all your customers or contact them in any way you like, you would get orders. They already showed you that they like what you sell to some level, there's some interest. They've already purchased from you. Okay, the trouble is is that you'd, you'd go out of business because you'd spend way more money than you'd get back. You'd have a decreasing amount. So what do we do with this? How do we figure this out? That is one of the key factors in making money with data. The other thing, that the other way that you make money with data is by identifying new business opportunities, which also can often come from here, but a, a lot of times comes, it comes from anomalies. It comes from those business guys that are down there. And we'll talk about that as we get into the modeling concept. But for, for today, I just want you to understand that big data starts with hard data, goes down to soft data, and that sometimes there's stuff that's relatively inexpensive, more universal, that can actually make you more money than paying to append your customers. That's all we're gonna do for today. I'm John Miglosh, have fun with your data.